Hey, what's up guys? This is Jorge Yao, and I'm back with another episode of Road to Legends. Now, I'm on my second account, the hashtag Yao Squad, and I've been doing pretty well on my Road to Legends, but not as well as I'd like. Um, so, as you all know, the update happened uh, yesterday about, um, let's see, 12 hours ago? more A little bit more than 12 hours ago, I would say like 16 hours ago, I think. Uh, and as you can see, I've already built uh, walls, I built all 25, and then I kind of gemmed them. I used all the gold that I already had, and then I gemmed the rest to level 9. I think I don't think I'm going to actually um, gem them even further. I think I'll probably just farm them. Um, it's actually easy to farm golds, especially when you're using uh, el elixir-heavy uh, army compositions. So I'm usually pretty good on farming walls, um, even at this level, because of the loot bonus. Um, and also for Morris too as well. So, oh, as you can see, I can collect, collect castle. Oh, it's only just dark elixir, so I probably already collected that. So, so let me go show you um, what I like to call a whale dash. Now, unfortunately, um, so you saw probably some a lot of fluctuations last night or yesterday during the update um, for the top players because everyone basically right after the update. Uh, they're trying to go into the battle queue as fast as possible or trying to spam revenges just to get that one whale that makes their entire session basically worth it. Now after about that 5 or 10 minute window, and I explained this whole whale dash thing in one of my previous Road to Legends episodes, but uh, you know, you really only have 5 to 10 minute window where you find the whales. So, um, so that being said, you know, it's usually the first battle that you find. You take that person out and then it makes your whole session worth it. Beyond that though, then everyone else is either logged in, shielded, or in the clouds. So the rest of the session is usually really, really bad. Um, so one caveat to that though, uh, and I guess it's a pro tip, and also it's kind of logical. What, six hours after uh, a maintenance break is also a really good time to raid. So if you're one of those people who are like, okay, well I don't want to participate in the whale dash because I don't want just one whale. I want to have the opportunity to have multiple whales but and take a little slight gamble. Then what a lot of people like to do is they like to wait about half an hour to an hour after the maintenance break, especially if you have a shield already and you don't want to break it. Uh, they wait half an hour to an hour after a maintenance break and then they start their session. That way all the players that are not shielded and start their 6 hour session, they will all have to log off and go on defense 6 hours right after the maintenance break. So that's a prime time for people to go and search for those whales to basically show up. Because there's gonna, so that is a huge population of large cup players that will probably log off at that six hour mark right after the maintenance break. So that's another strategy that you can use, um, you know, depending on whether or not you want a guaranteed whale right after the maintenance break and whether or not you have or don't have a shield. Or if you're shielded and you kind of want to see, okay, maybe I can find some whales at that six hour mark post maintenance break. So right now I'm currently at 4959. Uh, doing pretty well. I'm only what 41 cups away from Legend League now Last night uh, after the maintenance break. I was really really hoping for a uh, Hoping for a whale, but instead, you know I got a one cupper which kind of sucks because I see all these other players climbing and You know they're hitting whales right off the bat and I see clan chat just popping and there you go I only find a one cupper. So let me show you this replay you know, it's just a one star. It's actually was nothing too exciting. It was just a snipe. So snipe that one. So nothing too exciting. So we'll return home. And then we'll go to our next battle. Let's see. Attack log. So uh, see, I find a 4559 copper, a 4552 copper, or 4528, excuse me, copper. So nothing too crazy last night on my, uh, on my attacks. I only gained six cups. But luckily I had a one day shield that I could pop, so that was kind of a free session so I didn't have to go defense. And the good thing is, in 13 hours I can start another 6 hour session, and then I have a two day shield available. So basically in 6 hours I get to, or in 13 hours, I get to attack for 6 hours straight for free without having to lose any cups on defense. And that's granted that I don't lose any attacks. But nowadays with Lava Lunion, it's very hard to lose on it, uh, with attacks. It's a very strong OP strategy if you know how to use it, right? Um, and the surgical Lava Lunian strategy that I've been kind of adopting from uh, a lot of the top players, it's working quite well for me. So let me show you an attack. Um, let's show you this two star on this 4528 guy. So 
This is actually a, a base that's quite common, but it just looks different because of the new walls. So it kind of tripped me up when I first looked at it. I was like, oh man, this base looks new, but really it's it's a base that's been heavily overused. And uh, in my previous Road to Legend session, I actually showed you that I been practicing on this base uh, to try to two star even though even if it's worth one cup I still try to practice and get the two star because then you never know when you find this base again and see it and then you know when that happens you want to be ready you want to be you know completely confident that you can two star the base so as you can see I go from the bottom right side um, a lava lunion and you know there's single target infernos which is great for me because Single target infernos uh, don't really do much against Lava Lunia attacks. They're, they're devastating to my drag attack on Jorge Yao account, on my main account, but not really an issue for my uh, for my Lava Lunia attacks. As you can see, without even heroes, I already have the 52% to have four loons and seven minions. You know, I keep those up as cleanup uh, just in case. So no, nothing too different in terms of my normal attack strategy. You know, I'll put in some wall breakers going for the two star. Pretty simple, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, the one thing that I would like to mention though is when you have cleanup like this, um, the one thing that's kind of stressful is knowing where to place your king and queen. Because if you place it one tile too to far to the right or too far to the left, they could wander. So that's where the cleanup crew kind of comes in, the four loons and the seven minions. Because if there's a building like, let's say, this archer tower or this elixir storage, if they're kind of in your way, or they're like the first line of sight. See, I, I take it out because I'm kind of worried. But my, my queen already went in for it, so it really didn't matter at that point. But a lot of times you'll see that, that if those are your first line of sight in terms of where your queen looks, then your queen will most likely wander. So you don't want that to happen, obviously. So that was a two star for three cups. Uh, let me show you the other, the two star for two cups. Another standard looking base, nothing too crazy. You can see he started building some walls, not really farming them, but uh, you know, just added the walls and there you go. So going in with the uh, the Lava Hound with the Rage, take out the first air defense, you know, I pop, pop that one and then I uh, snipe the Archer Tower that's there. Uh, and the reason why I snipe the Archer Towers, uh, because those are the things that really threaten air, so then, you know, then my minions can really do the work. Um, so I do a little bit more surgical at the top too as well with the air defense and the, uh, the Lava Hound, so pretty cool. As you can see, nothing's coming out of the clan castle. So usually, you know, if there's a lava hound, it would come out of the clan castle. But because of the new update, um, you know, nothing comes out if you're attacking with all air, which is a good, huge advantage. Now I'm going to showcase another uh, Road the Legends episode, I guess, on my main account of Jorge Yao, where I use dragons. Now in that one, it's really important that I take out the clan castle because. Uh, when you go for the two star with heroes, you want to make sure that nothing comes out. Since lava hounds are really devastating against dragons, um, they no longer attack air units, so that's actually really good for dragons. So I might actually switch it up and and use uh, an additional free spell, so and attack from the clan castle side. And that's just the dragon strategy that I'm probably going to be using and showcasing in a little bit uh, in a later episode. But yeah, there you go. If you destroy the clan castle, nothing will come out later, so then your king and your queen are safe. But I'm still debating whether or not I want to keep the earth, uh, the keep the poison spell, excuse me, um, because that poison spell really comes in clutch, especially against skeleton traps. So, you know, that's the one thing that I want, uh, that I'm kind of weary about, you know, replacing the poison spell with the earthquake spell. But I do like having the extra free spell that you get by taking away one of the lightning spells. So you'd have two lightnings, uh, two rage, one freeze, and one earthquake. Uh, so as you can see, I use, so I'm gonna pause it right there. Uh, I probably should have talked about this a little bit sooner, but I use the queen, the king first to clean up these buildings like over here, because if I drop the king and the queen simultaneously, the queen would wander and target the buildings here and wander most likely, because in this base layout, the town hall is more than three uh, spaces deep. So the queen can't snipe. She has to destroy that wall before uh, getting to the town hall. So that's why I drop the king first clear those buildings out so when you drop the queen she's already automatically targeting the the clan castle um so or the the town hall sorry excuse me and so there you go she's going for it boom two star not a problem so there you go that's the uh that basically does it for this episode there's really not much more i am upgrading my level 7 lightning spell but i'm not gemming it on this account because uh, I don't really use lightning spells with my Lava Lunian attacks, so I'm waiting for that to actually uh, 
finish in 13 days and 21 hours. Yeah, two weeks basically. Um, if I do change uh, to dragons or something like that and need that lightning spell, I'll probably just finish it using gems. But for now, I don't really need to. Uh, so let's take a look at the leaderboards actually right now as I stand, as it stands. So top players, I am currently ranked uh, 31. So not too bad. I'm, I'm making strides. 31 in the world, which is pretty good. And then in the US, I'm ranked number two. So that's that's pretty good. I've been pretty stable for the last uh, week or so. And I'm so happy today that I get to have a free six hour session starting in basically 13 hours. So hopefully in that session, I can gain as many cups as possible and I find a lot of whales because then I can use two weeks, two day shield and not have to go on defense. So I'm really, really hoping to at least cut that margin down, that 41 cup margin to the Legends League down in half. So hopefully I have a good session and I can gain at least 20 cups. Um, best case scenario, I gain 41 cups and hit Legends tonight. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. But uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so there you go, that concludes this episode of Road to Legends, and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and peace out.